Hey guys, it's Katie. Welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to show you guys kind of exactly how the Flow Hive works. Okay, so I'm a part of a couple different Facebook groups, and I'm honestly shocked, appalled, blown away at the propaganda and just straight up like misinformation that is out there uh, about be you know about the flow hive and you know i thought that there was a lot of controversy around i don't know you know vaccinating your children or cannabis or so many other crazy more controversial topics i thought there was a lot of you know a lot of controversy and crap around but there is literally so much surrounding beekeeping and i don't know i'm not a pro i'm not you know, in any way saying that I am. I am still a very, very new beekeeper. But I understand the concept of the flow hive. It's not that hard to grasp. And I feel like people just straight up just don't understand exactly how it works. And they think it's a bad thing. And they think that, like literally, I was a part, I'm a part of this Facebook group. And the things that people were on there saying legit blew my mind. They were like saying that, Bees get all their heads chopped off when you harvest. People were saying that, uh, you know, all of the pictures of, of the flow hive, they're all fake because you don't see bees coming out of them. And, and it's all just, a, it's just fake. And, and it's just literally, I was so blown away. And I literally was telling these people, like, you guys don't know what you're talking about. I've harvested honey. I've been beekeeping with my flow hive. This is my second year. And just because it's my second year, people like discredit everything I'm saying because I'm a new beekeeper, but you shouldn't discredit what I'm saying about the flow hive and how it works and the invention itself just because I'm a new beekeeper. Like I said, I understand the way the invention works. And as soon as everybody else understands that, I think the propaganda will start to, you know, get depleted it's kind of like the same thing with cannabis you know now the more and more um, scientific studies and the more states that are are regulating and allowing cannabis is the more um the propaganda has died and it's it's becoming a normal a normal thing and so um this is just kind of a video to help you guys understand exactly how it works if you don't and I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that you learned something new today. So uh, if you are interested in learning more about the Flow Hive, just keep on watching. I've got some good stuff for you. So I wanna show you guys a diagram. So that way when I go outside and I show you guys the actual Flow Hive, you can kind of understand what I'm talking about better because I explained it in this way. So this is your traditional honeycomb. I only drew three little honeycomb because that's all I really need to, to describe you how it works. So in a foundation frame, which a lot of beekeepers use, it kind of basically just starts the honeycomb out for them. So it's just like this. They have a guide and they can build their comb straight up from that. A lot of people don't like to use foundation frames because um, they think that it causes the bees to become artificially larger than they normally would. And then in, I guess they have shorter lifespans or something like that, or they're easier suscept susceptible to mite load. I'm not exactly sure all the propaganda behind foundation frames, but it's basically the same exact concept. The flow hive is the same exact concept as a foundation frame, except it is the foundation is larger than a normal foundation. So in a normal foundation frame, you have a guide, like I said, and it's it's really, really, like, it's literally sticking off the frame like this much. Like, it's such a small guide for them. Well, the flow frame, it's actually the entire comb. So all they have to do is fill in this middle slit because in, in the center of all of the comb is a slit. And so what they're going to have to do is they're just going to have to repair that slit up here and down here. If you hear all the noise in the background, it's my bunny, my dogs, my cats. They're all playing right now, so forgive that. Anywho, so all they have to do is repair that slit, that slit, that slit, this slit, this, you know, all the slits and all of the combs. 
just so that the comb is completely repaired and they can fill it up with honey. And then all they have to do is cap it over. So in a normal foundation frame, they would build the entire comb and then cap, you know, fill it up with honey and then cap it over. But with the float frame, all they have to do is cap this, cap this, cap this, cap, you know, cap all of the slits and then do a cap over the top. Now, um, as you can imagine, like say we're looking at the comb, we're looking straight down on it and this would be, this part right here would be the front of the comb right here. So say you're looking at the length of the comb. The slit is literally the length of the entire comb. So they're gonna have to fill this entire slit on both the top and bottom of each little individual cell with wax. And like I said, once they fill it up with honey, they'll cap it over the top. Now, Flow Hive specifically says, do not harvest your honey until all of the cells have been completely capped over with wax. And that's ensuring that your honey is at the perfect moisture content and it won't spoil. Because if you harvest honey that is not capped over, it's not the right moisture content and it will not have a good shelf life. They cap it over at the perfect right moisture level. They know when it's at the right moisture level and they will not cap it over until it is. So what you do is you, you, know, you just carefully remove your frames. Don't do it all the time. I wouldn't check on your flow frame for about every four weeks. Um, pull them out, check on how well they filled it up. If they've completely capped over it, then you know it's time to harvest. I'm not saying that you should harvest it because you need to remember, always depending on where you live, for me, I have to leave at least 40 pounds of honey in my hive in order for my bees to survive, at least. So the chances of me harvesting honey out of my flow hive this year is probably going to be very slim because I need to make sure that my hive has enough honey to survive the winter or they will starve to death and they will literally die. So, um... Once it's completely capped over, then you can harvest the honey. And so what you do is you put a key in the top of the frame, you turn it, and what it does is this top part right here will go up, or this side, I'm sorry, the left side will go up, the right side will go down, and it will literally turn into a broken, I, I, I just made that really screwed up looking, but it will literally turn into a broken comb and it'll split in half and all of the honey runs through the center all the way out to, through the spout. And there's like little slits in the bottom of the, um, the flow super. So some honey does come out and the bees sit there and they lick it all up and they clean it all up and it's not a big deal. Um, but that's how the honey comes out. Now, you're probably thinking, well, that probably does kill bees because you're literally splitting the comb in half. But like I said, you don't harvest the honey until it's completely capped over. Once it's completely capped over, the bees are no longer in the cells. They can't be because it's completely capped over and there's honey inside. So that's how your bees don't die because they're literally not in the cells. You don't harvest it until all of the cells are full and they're completely capped over and you have no risk of killing bees. Now, if you're thinking, well, what about the larva that the queen lays? Well, that's why you have to put the queen excluder in there. The queen excluder is very, very important. That goes between your brood boxes and your flow hive. That way your queen can't go up there and she can't lay babies in your cells, your honey cells. That way you don't have any risk of having baby guts in your honey. So now that I've explained exactly how the flow hive physically works, I'm going to go outside and show you guys it like physically in person so you can kind of actually get the invention to you know you can picture it compared to what I've drawn here for you so let's go ahead and do that now so I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I was talking about via the diagram so you guys can see obviously there is there's definitely like two pieces of the comb and you can like if you look inside of the comb you can see the little tiny slit that I was telling you about down the center that is the slit that they have to fill up with wax and then they have to um, obviously fill it with honey and then cap it over before it's ready for harvest. Um, but it's literally, it's no different than a foundation frame. It just has bigger, longer foundations. So that's 
basically exactly how the flow hive works i hope that this was way more informative than anything you've read online or that you've um you know have heard from somebody else because you really need to physically see the it yourself and see the way it works um to be able to put judgment on it and to be able to speak on it at least in my opinion um and like i said i've got two traditional brood boxes down here and then i have the flow hive on top so they do have their own comb down below which is completely um, foundationless frames so if you guys enjoyed this video and you guys found it informational and you learned something please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already and like to be go ahead and subscribe to my channel i will see you guys in my next video take care